What is up, Dream Media family? This is Zach. If you guys aren't a subscriber already, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and give me a big thumbs up on this video. Today, I have a very special episode for you. If you didn't catch episode number one of my bedroom, make sure to go check it out. This is gonna be episode number two of my bedroom and bathroom. What's really cool about this episode is I'm happy with the Sona soundbar, the arc, as well as the sub, but it can be better. So I'm gonna show you guys what my upgrade is. This is something that I haven't seen anywhere on YouTube. So I hope that you find this information valuable as to something you can do in your own home. Let's go! <laughs> All right, welcome back to your media family. If you guys aren't familiar with this channel, you gotta subscribe because we do everything home theater, distributed audio, hi-fi, pretty much anything electronic for your home. We have you covered here at Dream Media. But this particular episode, I've been waiting a long time to shoot this. I mean, I've had the product for months and just haven't had a chance, haven't had the time to actually do the installation. So check it out, guys. Ooh, what is this? Well, to most of you, this may just look like an in-ceiling speaker, but it's not. It houses a Sonos One. Look at this, guys. Super freaking cool. A lot of you guys have these scattered throughout your house already, but they're ugly. I've been wanting to put them on the nightstands for a while, but my wife is like, yeah, right, you're dreaming. So the manufacturer, Fruition Designs, reached out to me and said, hey, what do you think about this product? And I said, that is amazing. I wanna sell it to my customers. So I said, send me over a pair. I'm gonna put it into my master bedroom and let you know my thoughts. I think it's super cool. All it's requiring is a Romax cable run up to it, which I can tap off of the power outlets over here to the left and right, and then I can put it into the walls. I do wanna point out, for most customers, this is gonna be an in-ceiling application only. When you reach out to Dream Media, you got to ensure, because this is custom integration, this is gonna require cutting the drywall and everything like that, you gotta make sure that your walls can fit it or you have the clearance in your ceiling, which for most ceilings, it's not gonna be a problem, but for some people's walls, it could be an issue. Let me give you a few pointers before we get into the installation on how you can determine whether this is gonna work for your home or not. Here's a quick way to determine if the speaker is gonna work or not in your wall. This is gonna be the average wall depth that the average person in America has a five inch wall. If you have a five inch wall, go look around your house, grab a tape measure. This product is not going to work in the wall, but it could go in the ceiling. Here is another wall in my home. And a lot of the interior walls and exterior walls within this home were built on larger studs than two by fours. So check this out, seven inches. This wall could house your Sonos One enclosure, but if you have a five inch wall, like the one I just showed you, it's not gonna work. So that's one quick way to determine if it's gonna work or not, but I would recommend that you go a little bit further. Let me take you upstairs and show you how I determined that these will work within the wall. The first thing I did was measured out the, the depth of the speaker and then the depth of the wall, I was like, oh, looks like that could potentially work. But I didn't want to take any chances because once I cut the hole, I got to have somebody out here to repair it and that's never fun. So here's a little pro tip. Let's go down here to the baseboard. I wanted to make sure before I cut the hole that I could actually fit this speaker within the wall. So just to kind of really take a rudimentary approach to it. I'm popping off the plate here. These boxes, when you build a home, are actually nailed into studs. So you're either gonna have a stud on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. What you do, I got a drywall knife here. You can use anything that's long and skinny so that you can stick it 
way back. And you can see my drywall knife just went super deep into the wall without hitting anything. So if I take my tape measure, check it out. I have a minimum of seven inches, six and a half inches right there. So I know based off of the, the depth of this enclosure here that I'm gonna be good to go. Pretty sweet. Now that we have determined that I can fit this speaker into the wall, I'm going to check where all my studs are and determine where I wanna put it. Cause I gotta get Romex electrical wire that is rated by the city to go into your wall. You can't just run extension cords to this. It could start a fire. You gotta do it up to city code if you're DIYing it. If not, hire a pro. But we're gonna run Romax from a power outlet to essentially just another power outlet is what this box is. A power outlet with a nice clean grill on it, has power switch, even has a little button for pairing. They literally thought of everything, look at that. This thing's sweet. And I did an uh, unboxing video showing you guys exactly how this speaker goes into the enclosure if you're cur curious. And I'll show you whenever I do the second one, one of these speakers going into the enclosure. We're gonna start off with the right hand side of the room. You're gonna wanna use that technique that I showed you on this side of the room with the power outlet and checking the wall depth on both sides or wherever you decide to install these speakers. You gotta check that wall depth. But with that said, uh, that side's good to go. This side's good to go. Now I need to check my stud bays. I'm gonna take a stud finder. And this Franklin sensor is one. You can get it on Amazon. It's super affordable and works very well. I've been using this for years. You just press the button and you scan it across the wall. So I'm not really worried about that first stud bay because I know it's on the left-hand side of the outlet, but I'm gonna go ahead and mark the next one. And this is just electrical tape. I use it because um, it's not super strong and you can peel it right off. Um, so that's our second stud. And then over here, we got our next stud. So typically guys, your studs are gonna be 16 inches on center. It's not always the case. So you don't wanna guarantee that that's, that's what's going on. But in this case, yes, we're sitting about 16 inches on center. So now I know I can put the speaker here, 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 or here, but obviously the purpose of these speakers for this room, because I already have the Sonos Arc and the Sub, is I want surround effects. I want the bullets to be ripping around the room when I'm listening to a music, the, the car screeching right behind me and stuff, you know? Um, so, but couldn't put them on the nightstands because the wifey doesn't like that. So this is gonna be a great solution. I can't wait to get them in. Let's go ahead and go to the other side and mark out those studs. I do have an outlet down here on this side that we're gonna tap off of. I checked my wall depth and now we're gonna check for studs. So in this case, I actually have a stud over here on the left-hand side of the outlet. And then my next stud is right here. And then my next stud's in the corner. So I could either put it here, here, or here. Um, I have this little bump out right here that would actually block the audio. So what I'm thinking we do, I'm gonna take my tape measure and make sure this, they're the same distance on both sides, but I'm thinking I'm gonna butt it up right against this stud so that it's not firing into this headboard here. It'll be firing right towards our ears whenever we're in bed. And I wanna get it down here at ear level for when we're laying back. This is just to give you guys a visual of how thick this wall is here. Now we're actually going to get into the nitty gritty of how this is performed. If you guys aren't familiar with working with electrical, if you're not a super handy person, please do not attempt to do this yourself. You could either burn your house down or electrocute yourself. Um, you can hire a licensed electrician at a very reasonable cost to do this quickly, whether it's in the wall like this, or if you want to pop them into the ceiling, all you got to do is just tap off of high voltage electric, something that's not tied to a switch. You want like an outlet 
or a junction box or something like that. So here's my tool bag. I'm gonna be using a few things. Got my, my handy dandy tester here. We're gonna be popping on the outlet and you can see the power is on. If you're doing it yourself or even a lot of electricians because we've shocked ourselves so many times, we'll uh, kill the power. For this video, I'm definitely gonna kill the power just so that I can record and do the work safely. Um, what you need to do is go down to the breaker, mine's in the garage, and kill the power. Once this light's off, you know that you're ready to rock and roll. Other tools we're gonna need, a drywall knife, either automatic or manual, since I'm not cutting a whole lot, I'm just gonna do it manually. Plus, a lot of you guys will like to use a manual one because you can pick it up at the Home Depot for five bucks. A drill, either automatic or manual. Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, manual or automatic. Romax, if your home's wired with 14.2, use 14.2. If it's wired for 12.2, use 12.2. Enclosure itself, plus a Sonos One, a Sonos SL, um, or the Sonos Play One. Those will all work for, for this. Um, you're gonna need some wire strippers, like that. And anything else that I end up using along this video, I'll point out to you guys, but that's the basis of it. Plus, I like to lay down moving blankets where I'm working just so that I can keep the area clean. So I'm gonna start by moving the nightstands, the sub, and getting ready to do the thing. You don't have to lay down a moving blanket like this. I kinda do it by from habit, <laughs> from back when I was in the, the custom integration install field every day. I just happen to become a neat freak. I like to keep everything clean and be organized. Plus it just makes cleaning up easier. These are high voltage electric boxes since we're gonna have to drill through the studs to get the power up there. I'm gonna have to do some blank plates like this. And in this circumstance, I'm probably gonna have to do two on this side. And on the other side, I'm hoping I can knock it out without adding any. What I might do, just because I hate blank plates, is pop in another electrical outlet. It doesn't hurt to have more electrical outlets here for plugging in the vacuum or iPhone chargers or whatever. And I'm gonna show you how that's done. So we are prepped. We got both moving blankets down, nightstands moved, studs taped out. Let's go ahead and kill that power. I'm down here in the garage now. This house is labeled pretty well. So my guess is, is that it's just gonna be on the master bedroom. Uh, outlet or breaker but this tool here for you guys that may have some older homes is amazing you can pick it up from home depot or lowe's klein tools it's a receiver um, and that piece that i plugged in on the other side is a transmitter so it's going to send the signal through the romex to tell us which outlet is for the master bedroom which looks like it found it 17 and if we look over here, number 17 is master bedroom. So we should be good to go. Out here in the garage, trying to grab an outlet. Do not need a GFCI, which you can see we got here. Trying to find just a normal outlet. You can pick these up at Lowe's or Home Depot. All right, back into the bedroom. Power is out. We are ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to give you the most up close and personal view you could possibly get, as if you're actually here. You guys will have to comment down below and let me know if you like these type of long, drawn out videos, or if you want it a little bit more simplified and edited down. 
haven't done these for a while. Dream Media has been growing at a very rapid rate. So we've just been focused on our customers and delivering a five-star experience, not so much doing upgrades to my own home. <laughs> so you can see we got our hot, our neutral, and our ground right here. Um, there is no stud on this side. So what I'm gonna do is just try to maximize the distance that I can go without cutting more holes. So what I'm gonna do is grab a little bit more electrical tape like this, and then I'm gonna go and find that next stud, which is right here. And we're gonna wanna measure how far off the baseboard. We're looking at eight and three quarters. So I'm gonna mark eight and three quarters right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut a single gang hole. Okay, if you guys haven't done this a lot, there's a little tool over here in my toolbox that I'll show you. You can pick this up from Lowe's or Home Depot as well. And it just allows you to mark the wall so you know where to cut. But I have done this about a million times. Okay, so now that we got our hole cut, we're gonna go ahead and drill through the stud. Okay, and then what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna fish our line from here over to this box. So I'm gonna knock out a little notch in the back of the box. And then this is something that is a acquired skill, <laughs> getting the wire to get fish from here to there. So we're gonna grab our Romex. I'm gonna measure the distance to where I want the speaker leaving a little bit of extra room because this stuff is cheap and we're gonna cut the wire that way I can fish this direction or that direction now this is a little bit harder for me because we have insulation inside of the wall if most homes don't have insulation on interior walls, um, but uh, for soundproofing reasons, we have insulation within this wall. So we got the wire from here to here. Fantastic. Um, I think I'm gonna put my out, I'm gonna do a blank plate here and put my outlet in the next stud bay. In fact, I may be able to get away with only doing this one hole. Let's see, I'm gonna cut my hole for my speaker first. All right, so I'm down to the hard decision of where to put these surround speakers. In a perfect world, I'd like them as far back as possible, but like I stated in the intro earlier in the video, I got this big old piece here that kind of sticks out and blocks the audio, but in reality, our head's gonna be a little bit further down. Let's take the tape measure and kind of do a little rough math here. So we're sitting, we're at least at the bare minimum gonna block nine inches of audio. Got nine inches there. We're about 13 inches to the stud. So let's check on the other side and see where we're at. Sorry about the shaky filming. I'm doing the best I can by myself here. 13 inches on this side. So. Oh man, hard decision to make. I think to ensure that we get the best quality audio, I'm gonna go in front of the stud. So about 14 inches. Now we need to measure how far off of the stand to go. So we don't want this to block it either. So we're about 28 inches from the stand. The point of this is for me to get rear low level effects. So 28 and then we got another, another probably inch roughly cause you got this gap here. Yeah, about an inch. So about 20, 
27 and go about 27 inches from the floor to the speaker. All right. So within the contents of this product, you guys can call us to purchase this. Um, they have an installation guide and this is really helpful. Shows you exactly how to install it, everything that the product can do. Picking the speaker location at least five inches. 10 inch diameter. You can use a whole saw to make it faster or you can just use a manual saw like I'm gonna do. 14.2, we already talked about that. I talk about exactly how to install it. I'm gonna show you guys how to do all of this. That's the junction box where the Romex is going to. Speaker latches. And that shows you how to actually put it in, which I'm gonna show you as well. And then this is what I was looking for. So we need a speaker cut out, right? So I'm gonna put this on the wall and trace it out. That way I can cut right along these lines. For the fun part, we're gonna go ahead and install our, or actually cut the hole. Um, we're gonna mark out exactly where we wanna install it. We got a height of 28 inches for the speaker. I'm gonna go ahead and do my, cut my hole exactly at the 28 inch mark because we have another inch to the speaker and then to the tweeter itself, it's actually six inches. So, that's where the tweeter is going to be. And when you're laying down in bed, that's going to be pretty much right at ear level, which is what I'm going for. I want the effects to be low and feeling like it's coming from behind me. So I want to butt it up against the stud as close as possible. I'm going to look at these dog ears. Yeah, we'll be able to get those in there. Okay, so we got our mark there. And... I'm just gonna double check. Okay, so right here is the start of the stud. Just confirm. Okay. And then if that's the edge of the stud, it's a 10 inch cutout, did it say? Hole diameter eight and seven eighths cut out on the dotted line and uses a template to mark ceiling. So if eight and seven eighths is an ideal hole diameter, then about four, four and a half roughly in is gonna be our center mark. So four and a half. We wanna leave just a little bit of room so those dog ears can open. Let's do closer to four and three quarter. And then what's nice is because the studs line up on both sides, once I install this side, the other side's gonna be a breeze to knock out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the center mark here, to the center mark here. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but I'm all about just getting it done. So I'm gonna go Mark, 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 mark. Now, this is where we're gonna cut. So I can just cut on the dotted lines. Here we go. Finally, getting to the fun part, cutting into the wall. Boom. All right, we're cranking now. 
So luckily, now, oh, there's already a Romax cable going through there. So when you guys are doing an installation like this, you gotta be careful for what's in the wall. If you feel anything with your drywall knife, stop cutting. It could be electrical, it could be gas, it could be plumbing. All of it, not good to cut. <laughs> so luckily, there's already a Romax cable going through here. So I can just feed my cable right down. I'm gonna drill a separate hole to make it easier. Perfect. Oop. Had it and just lost it. Perfect. Now I'm going to attach my other line to it and pull it right up. Electrical tape. It's another thing I wouldn't hurt to have around for this project. Perfect. And I'm actually gonna pop another outlet in there. So I'm gonna leave some slack like that. But we're coming right along, guys. Right, guys, we're gonna start knocking out some of this electrical work. Peel back your shielding. Like that. Get rid of that. Cut back your neutral. Your hot. And then I'm just gonna tap right into these wire knots. You can either do it direct like that, or you can do it to the terminal on the side or into the slide in terminals on the back. But direct like this is my choice because it's just gonna be a really solid connection. And what I like to do is also grab a hold of the wires and twist them. So it just ensures that, that wire is not coming loose. So I'm gonna take it like this and twist them together. Then put my wire nut back on. And there's no way that wire's coming out now. Same with the neutral. You're gonna push all your connections back in nice and tight. You gotta watch out for that ground cable too. That can bite you in the butt. You don't get it in there super far. Because you don't want any of these connections to touch. <laughs> Moving along. I'm gonna go ahead and pop our plate back on because I know I'm done here so throw the level on your outlet when you're done and just make sure it only takes a second also straighten that outlet out make it look nice <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it right in the middle of the line and strip back our shielding Obviously, it would have been a lot easier just to blank plate it, but I figure why not have more outlets? And strip back our hot and neutral on both. Blue box for high voltage. Pop out the backs. Feed our wire in. Like so. Dog ears will open up on the back side. Definitely gonna have to bring our grounds together 
and I'm gonna need an extra little piece of ground. So I'm gonna show you the alternative to what I was talking about on this first outlet, the other way that you can wire together an outlet. So the grounds, there's only one place to put the ground in, so they have to be twisted together like this. Uh. All right, so we got our grounds twisted together. We're gonna put a wire nut on it. Like that. Grab our outlet. I like to do the more solid connection by like doing a little U-hook like this. Just because I wanna make sure no matter what that my connections are solid. Even though the push terminals work pretty good. For this video, this is what I'm gonna recommend that you guys do. It only takes another second, so. We're gonna go right here with our hot on both terminals and tighten them down. See like that, you're just guaranteed that puppy's not going anywhere. And you always wanna put them on in the direction that the screw's spinning. And that will just ensure that it gets even tighter and it's a really solid connection. that cool all right now we're gonna go ahead and push all our connections back making sure none of the bare wires are gonna touch and of course we want it very level we want it looking good like so strip the wire because we don't need all this slack so I'm gonna cut it in half still leave a little bit of slack though it doesn't hurt to have some wiggle room for yourself strip back our connection I do about sorry I do about four or five inches typically more than enough to work with because you don't want any of the wire that isn't protected by the shielding in the wall. That's the purpose of this wire to keep everything up to city code and nice and safe. This is our enclosure. We got to pop off our screws here. This is the junction box where the electricity actually will come in. So we need access to that. So there's four screws in here. I'm gonna take out all four. Mini screwdriver, like what I have, helps make it a little bit easier. This is where, you know, all these specialty little tools I have, cause I've been in the industry a long time, but for your average DIYer, it may be easier just to hire a pro to come in and knock it out real quick okay check it out got our terminals here open like that and these are push pin you just put it right in on the back side here this is where the wire is going to come in we're going to feed it through here that and again you want all that shielding inside and then you're gonna feed it through here I grab a 
pair of pliers and grab them. Tight corner to navigate here. Whoop. And then on the back side, you're gonna screw down your connection here. And this is gonna pinch that Romax between these connections so that it doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna tighten that down with some pliers too. See how it's twisting it? So you know it's tight. Now there's no risk of fire. I can sleep good at night. Now at this point, gotta make sure that the hole fits, which it's pretty dang close. I'm gonna use my hammer <laughs> and I'm a little rough on my tools. <laughs> okay, so now that we got our connections here, let me bring you up closer guys. We're gonna go ahead and connect. Hot, neutral, right up. Luckily they put these easy connectors on there. So the wires just slip right in. That's kind of how the back of the outlet is on the other side. And they work well. I guess I was just trained kind of old school because that's a newer technology. All right, and last thing is, is this ground wire. Since the Sonos is only a two wire system, you're not using the ground, so we're just gonna snip it. And then we gotta put our junction box back on. I'm gonna go ahead and screw down our dog ears to attach those the whole enclosure to the to the sheetrock see how it's pulling on the drywall perfect you want it super you want it super tight like that where there's no wiggle at all perfect all right, we're gonna grab our speaker, connect it at the bottom here. It just slides right into the wall. Like that. All right, you're gonna wanna spin all these dog ears to where it's facing towards the speaker and tighten those down. Whoop. Now, that puppy is super secure. And the last thing is we're gonna take our grill and pop that sucker on. Woo! Now that's what I'm talking about. It's gone. Happy wife, happy life. We got one speaker in so far and one to go that took me about an hour and a half that one was more complex plus i'm recording stopping and going every five seconds but it's not easy it's not super hard either though so this side should be an example of how easy it could be if you're not dealing with a multiple stud situation you're just gonna pop your outlet off oh i almost forgot always confirm Especially if you're a DIYer, I want you guys confirming that you are not dealing with a lot of electricity. I don't want my subscribers getting shocked, all right? <laughs> all right, pull out our terminal as well as our connections here. I'm gonna check which side our stud's on. This is always just a quick way of doing it. You can see we got a stud on the left-hand side. So we should be able to just drill straight up and pop that puppy in. Let's uh, do some measurements and get our template in place. All right, so I'm just gonna match the other side. I'm gonna do 28 inches off the floor. Let's 
16 inches and template. Boom, boom, boom. The second one's gonna go a lot easier, a lot quicker, that's for sure. Mark out our bottom. I'm going to double check my measurements before I cut to the other side of the room. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut them in. And then same thing on this side, guys. We just got to fish that wire up and over. Okay, and then once we get our wires ran, we're just gonna strip back the wires like we did on the other side. Luckily, in this circumstance, again, there was another Romax wire, which you can see right here, running through. So it just took some time, and you got to be patient with these things, but just uh, ran it right through. I'm going to cut on this side now. Another thing that can help if you haven't done this a lot is uh, fish tape or fish rods. You can pick that up at Home Depot and Lowe's. It is just a fish tape. It's kind of a semi-flexible line. And uh, fix, uh, fish rod is a harder like fiberglass line. And it just allows you to attach the Romax or whatever you're pulling through the wall. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to our... Connect to our hot on this side. Connect to our neutral. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and push all of our connections back into the wall. And again, you just wanna make sure all your wires are smashed in there away from the terminals so that nothing shorts out. Screw them in. Okay, so we got our Romex connected to the outlet and we got our box here. I'm just gonna unscrew all four of these here. If you can see, I'm gonna Unscrew all four of those just like I did on the other side. Getting these screws out is uh, one of the more tedious parts of this installation. With this mini screwdriver, I'm so spoiled with all of my automatic tools. This is uh, quite annoying. Okay, so unscrew the back like that. I'm gonna bring our wires through that actually now that i've done the other side i know you don't need the ground so you can go ahead and get rid of that because the sonos is only a two conductor take your wire through like so take your wire through this portion i'm gonna pull my connectors out to give me a little more space Trying to do this and make sure you guys can see as much as possible, but it's not super easy. Got it. Now we're gonna tighten it down, which is gonna compress that cable so that it can't come out. Make sure everything is safe. I'm gonna spin that connector until you see it tighten down the shielding on your Romex. Like that. See how tight that is? It's not going anywhere. 
Okay. So let's go ahead and pop her in. Oh, looks like I was a little off on my, my drywall cutting, so trim. Trim that section there. There we go. Trim the upper section as well. Okay. Pop her in. It's level. Okay, so we're gonna adjust our toggles here. Oh, we can't forget to make our connections. Go ahead and slip those bad boys in. All right, we got it. And next, we get to put our speakers in. All right, got the speaker in. Gonna tighten down our dog ears. It's getting late, but I am getting it done. Got both in, I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the power. Back down in the breaker panel, let's go. So before I actually fire on the speakers, I wanna go ahead and test the power. Two yellow which you really can't see, there you go. Two yellow means we're good to go. And I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides. Perfect. Just wanna make sure our connections are good. And then rock and roll. All right, we got power. So we are done with a lot of the hard work. Now it's down to just setting these speakers up and getting configured. Let's go ahead and clean up. It's been about three hours. I got both of them in. It is looking good. Now it's time to go ahead and set it up through the Sonos app, the fun part. All right, guys, we got the speakers put in. Now it's time to do the setup. We're gonna go over here to the little gear and then we're gonna select the master and we're gonna go to set up surrounds, continue. And we're gonna use the Sonos One SL Master Surround Left. And we're gonna use the Sonos One SL Master Surround Right. Do you want it to, it's asking, I already kind of pre-labeled them uh, just cause I knew what I was gonna use them for, but um, it's asking if I want to reassign them from their own individual zone to part of the master surround system. And the answer to that is yes. Same thing here. Yes. Now it's going to ask me which one is where. Which, you can hear the audio is coming from this guy. That is the left. Continue. This is talking about voice control, just like uh, all Alexa products, like this guy here that I have, the mm -hmm. Sonos speakers have, <laughs> it actually just served me, these uh, speakers have Alexa built in, which is really nice. Um, you want to ask questions or say play music or whatever, it just makes it to where you don't have to whip out your phone. Yes, I want that enabled. So we're going to add that surround. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and add in this surround. Surrounds have been added. So now they are part of this group. That is pretty sweet. What I'm gonna do is play a demo real quick so you guys can get an idea of the difference between before and now after with the surrounds installed. I made another video of this room with just the Sonos Arc and this one subwoofer. And part of this upgrade is not only the surrounds, but I'm gonna add a second subwoofer too. But I want you guys to hear it with just the surrounds in place because it should make a massive difference. Before I actually do the demo, I'm gonna hit True Play. 
Um, this only takes a second, guys. You just, through your phone, basically calibrate the room. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that real quick. There's not a whole lot to show you. You just follow the on-screen prompts and wave the phone around the room. I'm going to do it real quick, and I'm going to have to do it again whenever I hook up the second sub. But I want to give you a real idea of what it would sound like if you just wanted to do the arc, uh, two surrounds, and the sub. Whenever I did the version one of my master bedroom tour, we did Top Gun Maverick. We're going to go ahead and do that first, and I'm going to go to that opening scene. All right, guys, so literally I just started playing the scene and listen. You can hear like background music already, which is just making it sound like you can hear the uh, board operator's voice back here. So it's already feeling more like a real movie theater. I can't wait till the scene where the plane or the jet actually flies from the front of the room over you it should transition from right here in the the arcs Dolby Atmos speakers you should feel it up top and then move to the back it should sound pretty awesome So I'm going to pause it and actually remove the camera from the tripod so that you guys can hear it. It did exactly what I figured it would do. That's what it does in a, a actual real movie theater. All right, guys. So I'm going to try my best to, so you can hear it. But it's getting a transition right here from the front of the room. And then I'm going to put the phone right next to it. as it comes over. Well, that's what it's all about, guys, is that transition of sound around the room. And I was really missing that. We don't watch movies in here a ton, but whenever we do want to you know, grab the popcorn and watch the movies, I want a theatrical experience. And the sub and the Sonos bar was pretty good, but I just wasn't getting anything from behind. And because I've, I'm here my customers' crazy theaters so often, I just want every room in my house to sound amazing. Um, so that's just one example of the performance of adding the surround speakers. It's huge. Let's play one more clip. This is the first fighter jet scene in Top Gun where they're kind of dogfighting, going at it. They're, the jets and all those effects should be ripping through the room. So let's play it and uh, see what we hear. All right, so right off the bat, guys, you're hearing a bunch of like music in the background. You hear the jet? They're already putting the jet engine sounds through the surrounds. I'm sure you guys can hear it even in this YouTube video. It's a game changer. I mean, instead of the effect, everything, the dialogue and the jet and the audio, the background music, everything coming from the front of the room, now I'm getting dialogue mixed with the effects coming from where they should be. You know, they're coming from the front of the screen when they're actually there in the scene. Um, and then as the subjects are moving uh, through in the scene, it's transitioning back to the rear of the room. But whenever they're up front, you're getting background music. So it just makes it a much more immersive experience, really uh, more of a 3D experience versus just having everything coming from the front of the room. 
Definitely a game changer. Stoked that I put these in. Now I gotta do the full upgrade that I had intended to do, which is add in this additional subwoofer on the other side of the room so that regardless of which side of the bed you're sitting on, it's gonna be a really nice balanced surround system. Let's go grab that other sub. All right, so this other subwoofer, <laughs> I just threw it in this cabinet. I never recommend putting subs inside of cabinets because all it does is rattle um, and sound terrible, but I had this extra one and uh, didn't have anywhere else to put it. So I was like, well, you know, why not throw it in the kitchen? Uh, just to add a little bit of bass. I had it turned down really low though, because it was just shaking the cabinet. And at that point, you know, it just sounds worse than um, anything. But what I want to do is a in ceiling or in wall subwoofer to add to my Focal 300s that are in here. Um, that's going to be another project. While I'm down here, guys, one other project that you can expect to see on the channel coming soon is uh, we just moved in recently and I threw the Sonos Arc up there as a quick, easy solution. But that Sonos Arc and this subwoofer over here are going up to the guest bedroom. And then I'm going to be putting in the Focal 302 and then up top the Focal 300 series, uh, the A6s. So they're aimable. And then a PB3000. It's going to be pretty sweet. Okay, got the second sub in. One on that side, one on this side, surround speakers, the arc, it's going down. Now I just gotta get it connected in the app. So what we're gonna need to do to connect it in the app is go to kitchen ceiling and remove sub. I had it connected to the in ceiling speakers. Select a product to use with sub. We're gonna connect it to the Sonos Arc and the Master. Yes. The sub was previously connected to another product. Do you wanna move it to the Master? Yes. All right. So now we're gonna have the Arc, the two subs, and the two Sonos SLs for our surrounds. And while that's loading, I'll let you guys know about some future plans. We'll do Zach's bedroom audio system uh, version 3 series. Um, I want to add in additional overhead speakers here. These are just blank plates. Um, it's not going to be that cool because it's going to be a separate zone. Sonos doesn't have the ability to do a true 5.2.2 Dolby Atmos system. So it'll just be a Sonos amp connected to additional speakers, but I'll group it together with this zone so that it's just more full sounding, but it's not going to, I'm hoping in the future Sonos will come out with an update so that you can have in ceiling speakers operate as independent Dolby Atmos. So then it could be like a 5.2.4. You never know. Sonos, if you're watching this, that's my request. <laughs> and then as uh, version three of this uh, bedroom bathroom upgrade, I, I got some Focal 300s up here, uh, but Focal actually just came out with um, a outdoor line that is in ceiling weatherproof speakers. So I wanna put in the ceiling right here, um, one of these new Focal weatherproof in ceiling speakers. I'm hoping that they have a uh, dual voice coil uh, basically two speakers in one for left and right that could go right there. Um, if not, I'll pop in two speakers, which will probably be overkill, but there is attic access to where I can get right there. So that's going to be part of the upgrade. If I could get a dual voice coil with their sub, I, I definitely saw at Cedia they had an in-ceiling sub. That would be incredible. And I'll hook that up to the Sonos system too as a zone so that I can group together the shower with these in ceilings. Might be overkill, but that's what we do here at Dream Media. Just boys playing with toys. <laughs> so uh, the sub is added to the master now. Cool. So now whenever we go to master, we have our Sonos Arc, 
the ones for surrounds and two subs. Now we need to run our tuning again, true play. So we're gonna run that. So since this is gonna be my final calibration, guys, I'm actually gonna sit back where I'm going to be viewing the content. All right, so essentially you just wave the phone around the room and it does a auto calibration. It's nothing super sophisticated like what you guys see on our channel with, you know, Marantz and Denon and uh, Direct Live and, you know, all, all that. But um, it's definitely not Odyssey, but it's all wireless and it's just so easy <laughs> to set up. In hindsight, um, I came in on this build a little bit late. Um, but if I could have got in on this build earlier, I would have had them wire it for a true surround sound system. Um, Cause hardwired back to an AVR is always gonna be better. Um, I got a rack down there. I mean, they did pretty good wiring it for stereo. For the average person, that's good. But um, yeah, I mean, all things considered, Sonos, all wireless, has Alexa built in, just can't beat it. I'm gonna play this dogfighting scene again with the additional sub hooked up. Quickly! Quick, quick. Right. Rooster just saved your life, fellas, but it's gonna cost time. Not this time, old man! Don't let him get you, man. All right, guys, I'm going to do uh, another demo for you. I did this on the first variant of this room with just the Sonos soundbar and the one sub. And now I'm going to play it for you with the soundbar, surrounds, and two subs. This, this should sound pretty epic. <laughs> Five. All right, guys, so the other movie that I played in the first episode of this series for my bedroom was Baby Driver, the first opening scene with the bell bottom song and him drifting around the town, them robbing the bank. So we're going to go ahead and play that one again. And I actually put on my lav mic and the um, Rode little uh, microphone. So it should sound a little bit better, or I'm about to put this on. It should sound a little bit better um, than the iPhone speakers. I hope this gives you an idea of what it's like in the room. I'm actually gonna go lay in the bed. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, this definitely takes it to the next level. All right, guys, I'm going to bring you over here um, into the bed with me so you can kind of get the experience.
the the bass it like you heard the gunshots go off it's just like boom but instead of it coming from just that one corner now it's actually just it sounds like it's right underneath my butt like it's shaking the whole room the back side of the room equally now it sounds awesome for this level of system of course the sono subs can't hit super hard which is why I was saying earlier that it's better if you can to pre-wire your system because then you can put in like super nice subs or you know you can put in whatever level subs you want but you can get subs that hit down closer to like 14 16 18 hertz below 20 hertz which is gonna be a little bit more um less muddy sounding not the sonos is bad uh, for the money and the the fact that it's wireless but Hardwired is always better. <laughs> wow, that just sounds so much better. Now, whenever, you know, he's screeching around the corner, you hear the tires move from the front of the room all the way to the back of the room where the surround speakers are or like even as like the turbos like ramping up you hear it like hissing at you as well as the background music mixed in it's just a lot more full uh, a lot more 3d than just everything coming from the front of the room and having the two subs game changer i had that sub turned up too loud to where if I sat on that side, I was just kind of annoyed by it. But if I didn't have it turned up that loud, whenever I'm sitting over here, it wasn't enough. I wasn't really feeling any bass. So it's the struggle with one subwoofer. That's why a lot of our like really high-end theaters, you guys will see us put in four subwoofers, six subwoofers. But we'll always recommend like two at the bare minimum, uh, like a 7.2.4, 5.2.6. It's one of our most common applications is a couple subs it, it makes a world of difference i'm super impressed for what it is it sounds amazing all right guys well we're about to the end of the video i'm gonna go ahead and pop these grills on so you can see what it looks like finished nice and hidden super clean other grill here same thing Just disappears right into the wall just as good as a in-wall speaker for everybody out there who can't pull wire, don't want to pull wire, tapping off the electrical is much easier. So that's a wrap. Stay tuned for future videos where I do more upgrades to this space as well as other upgrades throughout the house. Um, one crazy idea <laughs> that I've had is we got these screen innovations shades right here that, that drop down. And I was thinking, you know, this is just a small little 55 inch, but that's all we can fit in this room. I was thinking how crazy would it be if we did a motorized screen innovations drop down projector screen like a 110 inch. That would be <laughs> kind of next level. Don't know if I could talk the wife into that one, but behind this wall, there is, that's my closet. So I could potentially do a little cutout right there in the middle and fire the projector, the motorized, uh, I could fire the projector onto the motorized screen, which would be next level. So, Stay tuned, guys. I'm always doing crazy stuff. Plus, we have awesome customers that are always doing crazy setups, giving you guys inspiration as to things that you can do in your own home. Okay, guys. Well, that is a wrap on episode two of my master bedroom and bathroom. I hope you guys enjoyed this upgrade and found all of this information informative and helping you make a buying decision and giving you some inspiration as to something that you could do in your own home. Whether it's the master bedroom or a dedicated theater space or your living room, these Sono speakers work great. And what I really like about it is even if you're just getting into home theater and audio video, 
The Sonos is great because you can always just move it to another room as you upgrade and get more passionate about home theater. So like I've taken these uh, speakers with me for years to a bunch of different houses and um, like the setup downstairs in the living room, it's going into the guest bedroom, the Sonos Arc and Sub, just as soon as I get a minute to put all the Focal speakers in the ceiling that are sitting down in the garage. So, um, and then after I've, you know, decked out the whole house, if I have extra speakers, it's a great gift. I can give it to friends and family so that they can start their Sonos ecosystem. Um, another manufacturer that we sell a ton of, if you are doing a dedicated home theater system, uh, right off the bat, you want to do it right, hardwired, pre-wire pre the whole house, whatever, um, is Denon Heos. Uh, Denon Heos is very similar to Sonos, and that's going to be built into my Marantz AVR that I'm going to put down in the rack, um, but I'm going to have to buy a Sonos port to plug into it so that I can get that surround sound system as part of the ecosystem uh, so that I can pair together the living room and the upstairs theater room with rooms like this and the kitchen and the patio and things like that. So if you're starting out, talk with my sales consultants about not only Sonos, but consider Den and Heos because it comes built into those AVRs. So you're starting out with a distributed audio zone for free. And a lot of those Denon and Marantz AVRs have multiple zones built in uh, right off the bat. So like you can power up a 5.1 in the living room plus your kitchen speakers and potentially, depending on which AVR you go with, another zone like the patio. Um, so it's a much better value. Um, but I, Sonos has been sending me gear for years, so I just have a huge ecosystem already in place. So it's kind of like one of those things where um, even the patio, I, I threw a Sonos port out there to grab audio from like a uh, CD player or from, uh, I can grab any source that I want. Essentially, you have the option with the Sonos port to input and output whatever audio that you want and send that to any zone in the house. So um, anyways, guys, we are geeks when it comes to audio video. We love building dream systems. Um, no matter what price point you're at, my sales consultants are on standby, waiting to consult with you. We like to FaceTime and Zoom. So um, whenever you have time, schedule an appointment with us. We'll uh, sit down on a video conference, look through your space, put together different options at different price points and find something that fits your exact needs and budget. Well, um, that's all I got for you guys. We do ship throughout the entire nation and have all the industry leading manufacturers to choose from. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.